America just won the World Cup hosting responsibilities. Now to that breaking news about the World Cup. Just moments ago, soccer's governing body announcing that a joint North America bid by the U.S., Canada, and Mexico won the right to host the 2026 Games, beating Morocco 134 to 65. There have been concerns about the president's travel ban. President Trump has sent three letters to FIFA assuring officials that foreign teams and their fans will be able to travel to the United States if North America is chosen. Okay, quick question. Why is Trump promising he'll allow people to come to the United States in 2026? <laughs> because even if he won a second term, he'd be done in 2025. That's some dictator-level confidence right there. <laughs> She's like, don't worry, in 2026, I'll allow you all to come into my country. It's like, but you won't be president then. That's what you think. <laughs> And you know, when you think about it, this makes sense. Soccer is definitely the sport for Donald Trump. Yeah, it's the only sport that involves building walls. And he'd be great at soccer because he's been faking injuries since Vietnam. He'd love it. <laughs> oh, I can't play. Ah, ah, my heel spurs. But that's right, America has won the bid to host the FIFA World Cup. And it's just funny how a few years ago, Americans were like, FIFA's a corrupt organization that can't be... What, we won the bid? We won the bid! We won the bid! <laughs> FIFA's normal now, we won the bid! <laughs> and you know what is surreal? Is that when the United States, Canada, and Mexico started bidding for the World Cup, the three countries were friends. But now, the way things are going, by the time the 2026 World Cup starts, fans are gonna be running through war zones to get to games and be like, go! And you know what, I'm not gonna lie, I, I could spend a lot of time talking about the World Cup, but this is America, so I know we've gotta move on. Uh, <laughs> which I guess is something I bet Bill Clinton wishes the media would do too. Former President Bill Clinton still out promoting his new book and still having trouble answering questions about the Me Too movement. I think the norms have really changed in terms of <laughs> what you can do to somebody against their will, how much you can crowd their space, make them miserable at work. Former President Bill Clinton is in the news tonight, facing a new firestorm for his answers in an interview in this Me Too era. He was asked whether he owes Monica Lewinsky an apology. Do you I feel I like you owe her an apology? No, I do. I, I, I never talked to her. <laughs> but I did say publicly on more than one occasion that I was sorry. President. Someone should ask you these questions because of the way you formulate the questions. What? <laughs> that is one of the weirdest moments I've ever seen in an interview. He just flipped it and asked the journalist the question. <laughs> like, I wish OJ had done that in his trial. Why don't you try the glove? <laughs> <gasps> it fits! <laughs> and by the way, his, his new book is called The President is Missing. And at this point, it sounds less like a mystery novel and more like his fantasy. It's like, Mr. President, we've got some additional questions about Monica Lewinsky. Pfft, where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> the president is missing. You know who I really feel bad for? President Clinton's co-author, James Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. That poor dude just wanted to promote a book. But now, he has to sit there quietly through every interview and watch the disaster unfold. <laughs> and the look on his face in every interview, well, just see for yourself. Looking back on what happened then, through the lens of Me Too now, do you, do you think differently? No, I felt terrible then. <laughs> and I came to grips with it. Did you ever apologize and, to and, no, Yes, you typically have ignored gaping facts. This was litigated 20 years ago. Two-thirds of the American people sided with me against the current occupant of the Oval Office. I think the norms have really changed. You don't have to physically assault somebody to make them, uh, you know, uncomfortable at work or in, at home. That's all I have to say. Got it. OK. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Mr. Patterson. That's all the time we've got. We'll be right back.